hope everybody's doing fine. What I'm going to go over in this video is going to be one of, uh, of the special senses, which is the ear. Like the eye, the ear is a, another amazing feat of human engineering. How the ear grabs the sound waves that are in the air. So these sound waves that look like, like a wave up and down and up and down. These sound waves, how they travel through the air and then this this uh, aura, uh, oracle or pinna uh, acts like a funnel and then those sound waves will go into your inner ear which eventually will process that information and then send it relay the information to the uh, the cochlear nerve and then eventually to your to your brain which pretty much in the auditory cortex of your temporal lobe and you hear beautifully what people are saying in all kinds of languages all kinds of pitches music everything is is processed by your ear okay so there's going to be three parts of the ear let's start with that so from the tympanic membrane out is the external ear then you have the middle ear which uh, includes this canal and also these tiny little bones right in here these are called ossicles all these little white bones and then we have our inner ear which is the structure this is like a snail Okay, so you should at least know those three parts. Okay, so let's start going into, getting into each one of those three parts and name some of the structures within each. Okay, first in the external ear, we have our oracle or pinna, which is that visible flask that you see right here. All kinds of different shapes and sizes. It funnels in the sound waves like this into the funnel, and then it goes to a, a canal. Okay, that canal will be called the external auditory canal. Or external acoustic meatus, whichever one you prefer. Okay. Inside that canal, you're also going to have these little glands called ceruminous glands, and they're going to produce earwax, and that earwax will help uh, trap any foreign-born particle. Okay. Okay. Make sure when you do use a Q-tip, do not go in there that far. Just a little bit inside, just to clean outside. All right. And then finally, we finish off with the. Uh, and then we finish off here with the tympanic membrane, which is this little thing right here, or the eardrum. Okay, so that's the external ear. Let's go to the middle ear. We already mentioned that the middle ear is made up of these the tiniest bones in our body, which are called the ossicles. Okay, and the ossicles are made up of three tiny bones. Think of mis, M-I-S. Okay, malleus, A. Here we have B, which is the incus. And here we have this stirrup looking thing that's called the stapes. So those are three ossicles. And those sound waves, when they hit the tympanic membrane, they're going to kind of distort or vibrate those uh, ossicles, which will lead to the, to the inner ear. Okay, one more component of the middle ear before we uh, depart that area is going to be this canal right here. That's called the auditory tube, pharyngeal or pharyngeal tympanic tube, or eustachian tube. So basically what that does is that it balances pressure from inside your body to outside. Let's say if you're, right, uh, you're on a plane, there's a lot of pressure up there. Uh, so what you do is you kind of close your nose and mouth, mouth, mouth temporarily and then you blow and you feel like this relief or release. Well, what's happening is that, that your station tube is opening up and allowing the pressure to equalize from inside your body to outside the body. And the same thing will happen if you go submerged into deep waters. All right, so that's it for the middle ear. Let's go next to the inner ear, which is this structure right here. Okay, okay so this is our inner ear. All right. Um, okay, so the inner ear is going to receive those sound waves to this oval window, which is attached to the stapes. And then the sound waves will come in to the cochlea that and along different lengths of this coat there you will get the different uh, sounds so whether it's high uh, pitch or low pitches okay all right so let's name the three parts of the inner ear first we have the cochlear which is a snail shaped structure then we have the vestibule which is this middle part and then we have the uh, semicircle canals which are these three u-shaped structures that's the first thing you should know 
Oak clear, vestibule, semicircle canals. The next thing you probably should know is that this, this bony part, this is made up of bone, that's called the bony labyrinth. Then you have the inside part, which is more flexible tissue. It's called the membranous labyrinth. Okay? So the bony labyrinth and then the membranous labyrinth. And you're going to have two types of liquids because these sound waves travel much faster and quicker, much faster and, and further uh, if, uh, if it's in water. Just ask the animals out, the, the uh, fish out at sea. The whales, they can communicate many, many miles through the water with their sounds. But anyways, we have the uh, in pink, as you can see here, this pink. Between the membranous labyrinth and bony labyrinth, you have perilymph, and inside the membranous labyrinth, you have endolymph. Okay. All right, so let's start with the uh, let's start with the semicircle canals. Okay, this is uh, this is gonna be a left ear, okay, like this. Uh, so this is a uh, this 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 one that's in the back here that's called the posterior semicircle canal. You have the lateral semicircle canal, and it's gonna be the anterior semicircle canal. Okay. And on the base of the semicircle canal, you're going to have this opening or this swelling called the ampulla. And the ampulla is going to contain sensory structures called the crista ampullaris. And what, the, what that does is that, let's say, for example, if you are moving to the left, then the crista ampullaris has a little structure in there called a cupola, cupola which acts like a buoy. Okay. And you see the buoy that's out in the water in the ocean. When you go to the left, the cupola will go to the right, so it's going to tell your body to go to the right. When you go to the right, the cupola will go to the left and it tells your body to go to the left. So it kind of helps you balance uh, and keep you st straight without falling one side or the other. So that's part of something called dynamic equilibrium. Okay. Then we have here in this middle part, the vestibule. The vestibule is going to have these two structures. Okay, this like, round structures here. Here you have the utricle, and here you have the saccule. Okay, utricle, saccule. Okay. And utricle sac and saccule are gonna be these two structures within the vestibule that are gonna have sensory structures called macula. And macula have these little crystals which are called otolins. And uh, what it's responsible for is for static equilibrium. Dynamic equilibrium is basically you uh, running around like in football, tight roping on the sideline and balancing yourself to stay in or, or a girl on a on a balance beam balancing herself and doing flips and then balancing herself that's more dynamic equilibrium static equilibrium is more like you're stationary on like a say on say on a, on a wheelchair or or in a car or standing on an elevator because you're stationary and something is moving you but you're able to keep balance and you know flip. If you're going forward on a roller coaster, you're not just going to keep on going forward because it's going forward. You're going to kind of try to go back and try and try to uh, balance yourself. So that's static equilibrium for the macula uh, within the utricle and saccula. So the way we memorize this, just think of U, S, and A, utricle, saccule, and ampulla. Okay. Another structure here within the vestibule is the oval window and uh, a round window. These two other structures. Oval window is attached to the stapes. Okay. And this state, uh, and the sound waves will come through the oval window, and then eventually go to the vestibular duct, to the organ of corti. Sound wave will come out the tympanic duct, down the tympanic duct, and then come out the round window. Okay. So oval window allows sound waves to come in. Round wave window allows the sound waves to come out. Finally, we have our third structure here of the inner ear, which is called the cochlea. The cochlea is a uh, uh, it's basically three ducts that are rolled up like a cinnamon roll. So uh, it's not just one duct being rolled around, it's three ducts that are forming a spiral, okay? So it just looks like one, but inside that one, there's three ducts. So let me show you what it looks like. See that? So you have these three ducts. One, two, and three. Those three ducts right there. Okay, so those three ducts have names, and uh, for that, I will show you another model. But let me uh, let me just show you one last thing here before we depart with this uh, overall. You can see the ducts in there. Here you have the cochlear nerve. The cochlear nerve is going to pick up the uh, sound, 
And then this is the vestibular nerve coming out of the vestibule. Whoops, that came out. And uh, the vest vestibular nerve, uh, vestibular nerve will send a signal of balance equilibrium along with the cochlear nerve with sound to make, come back to this, the eighth cranial nerve, which is called the vestibulo, vestibulo cochlear nerve. Okay, Let's see if I can get it better here. Okay, here you have the uh, vestibular nerve and the cochlear nerve, now the cochlear, and together they form the vestibular cochlear nerve, which is the eighth cranial nerve, and that'll take care of your balancing and hearing. All right, so this is what those three, those triplets of ducts right there, okay? Now, um, a way to help you memorize this, uh, these three ducts, is just think of three, three, two, one, okay? We have three ducts, three membranes, let me get my little pointer. Three membranes, uh, two liquids, one liquid here and another liquid there, one version of liquid, another liquid here, and then one organ of corti. We're literally an organ. When you play an organ, that's going to pick up that key or that sound wave. Okay, so um, okay, so let's do the three ducts. All right. So remember, this is part of the cochlear of the inner ear. So if you get confused, just look at one half is going to be by itself. The other half is going to have two ducts, no matter what model you look at. Okay, see if you can figure that out there. This is kind of like a mirror image of that one. Get it a little bit bigger like that. See, so it's a mirror image. Okay, they're both facing each other. Okay. So this half here is going to have a membrane. It's called a vestibular membrane. So the vestibular membrane is going to be beside the vestibular duct. So that'll help you memorize uh, the ducts. So you have the vestibular duct, tympanic duct, and cochlear duct. Okay. Now you can also um, call them scalas. Scala vestibuli, scala tympani, and scala media. Okay. So that's three, not three ducts. Now let's do the three membranes. This is the vestibular membrane. Here you have the tectorial membrane. And here you have the basilar membrane. Okay. You have three membranes. Okay. And then the liquids, these two will contain the perilymph, and this the vestibular duct and tympanic duct will contain the perilymph, and the cochlear duct or the scala media will contain the endolymph. Okay? And then finally, here we have the organ of corti. So when sound, sound waves come in via the oval window to the vestibular duct, then that's going to send a signal here to the tectorial membrane, and that's that sound wave, that, that pitch or that higher low pitch is going to be picked up by the uh, organ of corti and then send to the cochlear nerve and the sound waves will depart here in the tympanic duct and then out the um out the uh, uh round window okay so let me just read it for you step one sound waves arrive at the tympanic membrane step two movement of the tympanic membrane causes displacement of the auditory oscillators Step three, movement of the stapes at the oval window establishes pressure waves in the perilymph of the scala vestibuli. The pressure waves distort the basilar membrane on their way to the round window of the scala tympani. Vibration of the basilar membrane causes the hair cells to vibrate against the tectorial membrane. Information about the region and the intensity of stimulation is related to the CNS via the vestibular cochlear nerve. Okay, so that's a pretty good, I always think of that diagram when I think of, when I, when I talk about the ear. Very nice little diagram. Okay, um, well, that'll be it for the, uh, for the ear. If you have any questions, let me know. Any comments, any suggestions. Take care. Good luck. Bye.